Hello. Um, we're going to learn how to use GPG for USB today. Uh, it is a encryption program that is open source and portable. It can be used. Uh, you can install it onto a USB uh, flash drive and carry it around anywhere with you. And it, it will have all of your encryption keys and everything you need. Uh, it's a very easy program to use. Uh, works pretty much out of the box. Uh, I'll include the download link in the description and um, we're going to go through this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a encryption key. To do that we'll go to the manage keys button up here in the window that comes up go to the key menu and then generate the key and for the name and email address and all of that you can put any information in here uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Prefer something that you are going to want to be identified as. Uh, on the expiration date, uh, I generally check the never expire button unless it is uh, it's important that I maintain that key for a long time. Uh, if you do want to have the key expire, uh, just in case something happens, uh, before the key expires, you need to be sure to generate a new key and with your old key you sign and verify message uh, with your new public key. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, for the key size this uh, slider goes from 1024 to 4096. Uh, since about 2010 uh, several students at MIT have been able to crack 1024 encryption size. It is considered not secure. Uh, during the Snowden leaks uh, 2048 was deemed also not secure. Uh, as far as I'm aware, 3072 is currently believed to be secure, but I personally always select 4096 because I believe it gives us uh, some buffer for future proofing my encryption keys. That way, uh, new technological advancements come out in the next few years. I'll still be, have some time to update my encryption keys, get rid of any old encrypted messages, and so on. Uh, after we select that, we're going to put in a password and click OK. And this is just generating the key using random data. The more interesting things you do, the more random it will be, supposedly. Uh, it just takes a minute, uh, a little longer given that I'm a 4096 key. But once it completes, we will go on. And uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. And now click OK, close out of the key management window. And here is our new encryption key. If you want to share your public key with somebody, uh, which they do have to have in order to send you encrypted messages or verify any messages you sign, uh, you would right click on the key and select the append uh, selected keys to text and it pastes the public key into your text editor here. Everything between these end PGP and begin PGP blocks you need to select and send off to the other person. Uh, that is your full key. So, but let's say we want to encrypt a message to somebody. Uh, we would have to get their PGP key. So we would ask them to send us uh, their key and they would send it to us. We paste it in here uh, just like that. Go up to the import key button and go to editor. Or if you didn't feel like pasting it in the editor, you can just go copy it and go to clipboard. And then a window comes up. It says, gives the key information since this is a key we already had. Uh, it says public unchanged. But if it were a new key, I uh, really wouldn't say much differently other than that unchanged wouldn't be there. Click OK on this. We now have their key. And we're going to type them a message. Oh no, what did I do? Oh, I opened a new, uh, new file somehow. So, then to encrypt the message to them, we check the box with their encryption key and click the encrypt button and just like with our public key we have to send them everything that's in these boxes here 
uh, including uh, everything in those hyphens. So just select it all, cut it, and send it to them uh, via email as an attachment, however you want to. And when you receive an encrypted message, you would copy the entire thing out of there, paste it into this window, just like that, and click on the decrypt button. You'll be asked to input the password. If you put the wrong password in, it's not going to let you decrypt the message. And from there, it allows you to read the message that was sent to you. Now, uh, another important aspect of public key encryption is signing. Uh, the purpose of the actual encryption is to make sure that nobody is able to intercept a message or that nobody is able to read what was written to you. Uh, for instance, Now, if I wanted to send some sensitive data, like uh, uh, somebody's social security number, I would want to encrypt that, because that would mean that nobody else could read this data. However, just because a message comes through to you encrypted, that does not mean that data is correct. Anyone can encrypt a message to you. So if I were an attacker and I stopped and I intercepted this message from me, I can't read what's in here uh, because I don't have the, uh, the private keys required to decrypt this message. However, I know the general idea of what the content is. So I, uh, I compose my own message and change the actual data and then I send it to you. So that way you still receive the encrypted message, or an encrypted message, but you don't actually receive the right data. The way to confirm that the data has not been altered by anyone uh, in transit between the sender and you is uh, by signing the key. So let's say message. And as a general rule, it is uh, best practice to, you know, put the, the day's date or possibly the reason. Uh, that way, nobody else can uh, just send a signed message from you uh, that could be used for multiple occasions. Uh, for instance, if I, somebody just said, you need to send a signed message to me, if this was all I sent, they could send this out to anyone. Or if, uh, hold on, more importantly, if this was all I sent, uh, they could send this out to anyone who also asked for just a signed message. So, if I include, uh, you know, today's date, the exact reason I'm signing it, that message only has one purpose now instead of being multifunctional. So we sign the message by clicking on the sign button and putting our password. And this is the entire message that we would copy and paste uh, and send to the recipient. Now, if you want to make sure that not only is your information uh, not altered in transit, but also isn't read by anyone, you could also encrypt the message. Uh, that would allow that. So that way they could be sure that both uh, nobody's able to see it and can be absolutely certain that it's exactly what you told them. Uh, to verify, if somebody sends you a signed message, the way you would verify that it really was signed by them would be to just copy and paste the message into the text editor here and click on the verify button. A message will appear at the bottom saying text was completely signed by so and so. Now, for instance, if we change the message even slightly, we're going to just add a period in there, uh, it no longer validates as correct. We know that the information was changed in the time it took to get from the sender to us. That doesn't necessarily mean that 
somebody out there is actually intercepting messages and maliciously changing them. It could just mean that the sender uh, failed to copy everything. You know, they pasted part of it. Open new, and then they grab this, thinking they had gotten everything. So ask them to resend it, or possibly they, yeah. So ask them to resend it and see what you can do. Uh, another very important thing that uh, I actually mentioned when we were talking about uh, the encryption key expiration dates is uh, if you do decide to have an expiration date for one of your keys, uh, what you want to do is create before it expires, create a new key. And I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to set that to 1024 just to speed up the process. New. So, so we'll generate a new key. And here we have our new public key. How do we get people to trust that that is really our new key and we're not a hacker who is saying this is our new key? Well, we sign it with our old key. That way, uh, everyone who wants to message us can confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt that we really are the ones sending them this new key. Uh, all messages that are encrypted with it will only go to us and uh, so on and so forth. That is probably one of the more important things to be able to do. Uh, especially if you use encryption over a long period of time. But uh, beyond that, uh, I think that's enough for the essentials of using uh, public key encryption. If you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to contact me either uh, on YouTube or at the crypto scriptorium at gmail.com uh, I'm also uh, on YouTube, on Tumblr uh, and in the process of adding uh, information to that list as far as locations I can be contacted uh, just feel free to contact me wherever you can find me